Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Dr. Teeth. In this video, we are going to talk about the basics of dental photography. Now, taking photographs of your cases, the clinical work, the lab work is important not just for record keeping, not just for patient education, communication, marketing, but also it helps us improve our work. So if I look at my pictures an year back and if I look at my pictures today, I will realize that how far I have come. So it also helps in improvement of our work. So it is very recommended that you switch to the proper technique of capturing photographs using a proper DSLR, proper lens, a good flash system, and knowing the basics of dental photography, what settings we need to know to capture good photographs. So let's begin. What do we need for dental photography? We need a DSLR, a good lens, 100mm macro lens is recommended and a dedicated flash system. Now out of these three, the flash system is the most important. So you need to invest the most amount of money getting the good flash system. The lens comes next. And the least important is a DSLR. So the body of the camera is not that important, but the lens of the camera is very important. So invest on a good lens and a good flash system. Now there are three important settings we need to know in the camera. This is the ISO, the shutter speed and the aperture. Now ISO, that is the International Standards Organization, its value tells us how much the camera is sensitive to the light. For example, if I'm keeping my ISO more than 1000, then the image will be brighter. But if I keep my ISO 100, I will get a very dark image, absolutely black image. So obviously our first thought will be the brighter image will be better, but there is a catch. The problem is as we increase the ISO, the picture becomes more grainy and that is called as the noise. So as we increase the ISO, the noise of the picture increases. So the quality is decreasing, even though the picture might appear brighter. And the ISO 100, even though it is darker image, it has the least amount of noise. Okay, so how can we get a picture that has brightness also, but is not grainy? So there comes the role of the flash system. We use flash because of this reason. We get a huge amount of controlled light from the flash. So we can use a ISO of 100. The next one is the shutter speed. Now the shutter speed is the amount of time the shutter of the camera is open. The longer it is open, the brighter will be the image. Say if you have a slow shutter speed of 1 by 10, it will give us a brighter image. But if we have a shutter speed of, let's say, 1 by 200, it will give us a darker image because the lens there is open for a lesser amount of time. So less light goes inside. A drawback of the slow shutter speed is that since the shutter is open for a longer duration of time, we tend to get our images blurred, as you can see in this picture. The image captured with a slow shutter speed is blurred, while on the other hand, the one which is captured with a fast shutter speed is not blurred. So we can keep our shutter speed at 1 by 200th of a second. The last parameter is the aperture. Aperture means opening. So how much the diaphragm is opening, we can control. And this is the F number on your camera. So smaller F number means diaphragm opening will be large and when the opening will be large it will mean that more light can hit the sensor thus we'll get a brighter image but again we have a problem if we keep the f number low thinking that we'll get a brighter image and it will be better the problem is the depth of the field is altered by the f number so if you have the f number small even though the image will be brighter, but the depth of field will be shallow. For example, if you are considering this picture, you can see that the anterior teeth are sharp, 
but as we move posteriorly we are getting blurred but we don't want this kind of image so we need to keep the f number high means we need to keep our aperture small so that less light will strike the camera because our light is sorted with the use of flash right and we get a deep depth of field means the anterior and the posterior all the areas are sharp so to conclude we have to keep iso as 100 shutter speed can be kept at 1 by 200th of a second and f number it has to be kept large to get a deep depth of field we can keep f number around 22 to 25 for intraoral images and for extraoral images we can keep it around 8 to 16 so this was all we had to cover in this video if you want me to cover more details on the flash system whether we should go for a ring flash or a twin flash which brand we should buy let me know in the comment section below i will make a video on that and one video can be dedicated just on how to take the photographs of the patient so just let me know in the comment section below if you want me to cover that as well i'll see you in the next video take care Allah Hafiz.